Good evening, you guys, and welcome back to another episode of a live stream here on the Sergeant Tank YouTube channel. If you haven't done so already, do me a huge favor. Go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Turn on those post notifications so you get any future updates and so forth for this channel. And with that being said, let's go ahead and turn our attention and see who's in chat. So we got Victor in the house. First here, we got Daryl. Hello. Uh, we got Chris Fishroom. Hello, hello. Uh, we got Rev Ryan, Dr. Red Phil, Hill. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. We got James in the house. What's going on? We got Susan for SLC Aquatics. We got Rick, uh, Mr. Science Geek, Jim. We got Tim, Dennis, Steve, AFU2. I uh, went to my local fish club auction today, too. Yeah, there's a lot of them going on. Um, it, the one that we have is by far one of the, the largest uh, Michigan-related fish aquarium auctions, annual auctions that take place. I uh, went for several hours, so was able to snag some phenomenal things. Of course, if I had the, the financial means and the energy and the room, I would have gotten a lot more, as most of us would. However, I was able to obtain the one specifically that I have my eye on. Uh, so I know my budget because that's all I go in with. I go in with a set amount and I will not spend a dime past that. So that's what I advise anybody to do is do not take any more. Leave your wallet out in your vehicle. You know, if they accept debit or credit cards, PayPal, whatever it is, uh, just don't do it. You know, the best way to do is just bring in what you feel that you have the means to financially justify uh, that you worked hard to get and just stick with it. So uh, I was one dollar under my budget. So one dollar under my budget. So I won't complain. We got uh, Mark in the house. Nice seeing you again. B. St. John. What's going on, buddy? Um, can't wait to see you in uh, Chicago. So. Uh, we got Bentley in here. Hopefully you got something sweet. Can't wait the big auction for Seattle group in a couple of weeks. That's awesome. Uh, we got Angelo. What's going on, Angelo? All my fish tanks is fun to attack Placos suddenly. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, thank you so much, Victor, for adding our website. I really do appreciate it. Pretty impressive to stay under the budget. Yep, I can budget to the T. So uh, let's see here. I almost went to that auction, Dennis said. You should have showed up. It was a great auction. Uh, the one I'm uh, re talking about is your Grand Valley Aquarium Club. It's been around for many, many years, many years, and we have some phenomenal uh, veteran aquarists in that club. If you want to learn, that is the club to be in. These are individuals who have been around uh, and would school just about anybody. Um, those are individuals I look up to a great, great deal. Uh, so let's see, uh, the Youngstown, um, auction tomorrow. Uh, oh yeah, that's a good tip there. If you guys are in or around the Youngstown, Ohio area. So definitely keep in mind Sunday, the 21st of August, 2017. So anybody later on watching this, uh, check it out. It is um, the Y-A-T-F-S. So I'm sure if you Google that, uh, you'll be able to. Um, Mark, if you have a link, why aren't you a mod? Um, here, now you're a mod. Mark, if you're able to add a link to your club's website, uh, throw it here in chat. So um, if, you, if you're willing to do that, that would be awesome. Uh, I'm good at auctions, only really spent money once. Uh, yeah, I find it is by far one of my favorite things to do. Uh, you know, each and every month that we meet, the second Saturday of each month, it's just a, uh, you know, it's a phenomenal thing, um, to say the least. So they, they really have some outstanding, uh, you know, different uh, species of fish and plants. You know, and we do everything else anybody else does. I mean, this is a, a club that has their act together like no other. Uh, they go through their monthly budget.
first thing. I mean, you 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 better know species, not common names. Um, so yes, it, it is a if you want to learn a lot of as far as Latin terminology and species specifics and focusing on that kind of thing, uh, it's a club to go to for sure. And you can learn a great deal, uh, you know, with a hat. And not only the the uh, Breeders War program, uh, they have a little aquascaping contest coming up. Uh, which they would like me to be a part of. So I'm definitely gonna do it. I miss aquascaping. I wanna get back to my roots. And I'm gonna show you guys here actually something I won out of a $5 raffle. This is over a $100 nano tank uh, that I'll show you guys here. Uh, so I'm kind of stoked about that. I'll probably end up doing a video. Maybe I can turn it into uh, a future live stream or something like that where we can escape this thing together right here in the comfort of my desk because i'll most likely just set it right here on my desk because it's only a uh oh gosh this thing can't be more than a couple of gallons uh it's actually designed for a butter but i'm not putting a, a beta in that tank uh sorry so um not I have buttas and I breed them, but I'm just not going to put it in that tank. I'm, I know exactly what livestock I'm going to put in that tank, and um, we'll talk about that in a few moments. Uh, Dr. Red said, we have a fish doctor from YouTube uh, talking next month at mine. I will see if I can record. That would be awesome. Uh, Mr. Science Seek said, I miss aquascaping. I uh, want to get back to my roots. Haha, uh -huh. pun not intended, but funny, yeah. Um, that's a good one, though. Uh, we got Gary's Aquatics in the house. Hey, Sarge, glad to see you on. I was getting bored left. Oh, wow. Uh, let's see. Let's do it, Jeremy. Uh, we got Mary Beth. How, you, how are you? I uh, was watching Steam Bot's uh, light video, and he was wearing the Sergeant Tank t-shirt. That's awesome. I love Bob. That guy is, I'm sure he's lurking. You know I love you, buddy. Really do appreciate it. So I'm so far behind in videos. I, I need to just like binge watch everybody's YouTube video for like a whole weekend. Uh, let's see. We got uh, Sherry in the house. Thank you so much again. I really appreciate the update videos that you're doing. So if you guys haven't checked out uh, Sherry Sweeney, uh, definitely go over there and check her out. I'm, I'm proud that she's able to be putting out some some video, uh, not that she hasn't been putting out video, but to be able to actually uh, hear your voice and and see that unboxing and so forth, uh, I really, really do appreciate it. It means a great, great deal. Uh, we got white. Hit the like button. I want you to just, you can just lightly caress it or just smash the heck out of it. If it's me, I just, I purely, when I, I go all in. You got to give it 100%. So you can lightly just, kind of caress it or tap it, but I would just smash the heck out of that like button as hard as you can. Um, I don't think it's going to change the outcome, but it, it would make me feel much, much better. Uh, Bob is currently not lurking. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, is Bob here, Dr. Redfield? I left him a comment on what his fish disease might be. Uh, let's see here. I saw Wayne's Fish World today at my local club fish auction. Had no idea he was local to me. And saw Aquatic Jack. That's pretty cool. Uh, can you put too many plants in the tank regardless of the size? That's a good question. Uh, yeah, certainly could. Uh, I think too much of anything can not, not always be a good thing. And the reason that is, is that if one plant is out competing another, you could be suffocating the other plants because plants need what to survive. Um, so... Uh, between oxygen, appropriate nutrient content, and so forth. So if you put a bunch of people into a small room um, and shut the door, eventually that oxygen level is going to start getting depleted. Um, and, you know, I, I just won't want to be in a room with a bunch of people anyway. Um, maybe, maybe not a very good analogy. But, yeah, so I, I think it could definitely outcompete. Um, but... You know, as far as, as long as providing the appropriate filtration, lighting, um, and nutrients that they need as far as your uh, macro and micros and, and everything else, um, I'm a firm believer on Easy Green. I use it in every one of my tanks. I'm not being paid for by or sponsored by to say that, 
Uh, I really, really just like Easy Green because it has everything I need based on my municipal water source in conjunction with the lighting I use. So with that being said, it works and it works very, very well for me. I've been working so much at unable to catch all live streams such I took Friday off to watch NBC TV shows. I uh, used a hammer, but it broke my phone. Yeah, I wouldn't go to the point of using a hammer. Um, I think that might be stretching it a bit. Uh, we got Michael uh, Trevino. How you doing? I wonder if I can properly chat tonight. <laughs> uh, so far, it's coming through. I think you're doing. Uh, I think you're doing a superb job. Uh, I need fish to survive. Uh, that should be a song instead of uh, "Country Boys Can Survive." I would switch that title and do a uh, parody. So. Uh, there, there's a parody for you, uh, Mr. Science Geek. Um, let's see. Uh, got to go check on the shrimp. David Betancourt's Aquarium. What's going on, brother? It's good to see you in here as always. I know you've been busy. So it's always nice to catch you. Um, when you're able to make it, uh, Mary Beth said my pond snails have decided to repopulate and alarming rate thinking of using the inverted bottle top bottle to catch them uh, and trying to find tiny bottle openings. So my gold mystery sales. Are good. And yeah, I've done videos. Um, you can do basically like, like you're saying exactly. You're on the right track. Go ahead and give it a try. And I think you'll have uh, success with doing it. Uh, Susie Q O'Connor said, I love my fish club. All right, you guys, so you probably want to know what the heck did I obtain. So the first order of business um, is you'll see right here uh, with the seven barb uh, Kigoma species. This is your um, this is your Frontosa that I got, as I mentioned before, from KG Cichlids, Kevin. And then I put the three in here. Um, it goes against, and I realize that I'm being a little hypocritical because you know me when it comes to quarantine. Um, to not keep it with something else, but again, it is what it is. Uh, really the only tank that is a, the appropriate size in the environment uh, with the water parameters, the heat and everything that I needed. Uh, and I've been wanting to put these guys um, that have a buddy and I will put out a video of that. Um, it's very close monitoring and there's certain aspects that go into introductory and so forth when it comes to fish. If you look at the tank behind me, you'll notice a lot of things that the internet will tell you you can't keep together. Um, I'm about breaking the record, improving the internet is completely false. Um, real life experience is what's relevant, not what the internet tells you. So with that being said, just because these guys are working together right now doesn't mean a week from now I'm not going to have to pull them out. Uh, just because these guys are working together and you tried the same thing doesn't mean that they're going to work in your environment. Um, so they're all working together fine. I uh, went ahead and acclimatized and so forth. I got three of the Hero Severums in here. Uh, of course, I had to snatch up the Severums. You guys know I'm a Severum guy and I couldn't pass it up. So I was not going to let those slip past my little wonderful fingertips here and uh, let them get out of my way. So the only thing that you're going to be able to actually see, so this is purely a teaser, so I apologize for those who actually want to see pictures or video. Uh, you're just going to have to stay tuned to the channel and wait and see the updates that I plan on doing in future update videos in the coming weeks. Uh, the next one I got is your just your basic family Cribenzis, which is your, um, uh, come on, your pelvic, pelvic, Pelvicromus pulcher. Um, I got to refer to my list here. Remember everything I got. Uh, you got your Waru. So I was able to obtain three Waru uh, for basically a still of a price. Um, not going to mention the price and the value uh, just because I'm not going to disclose that information, but just know it was a good deal. Uh, something I've been wanting to get for quite some time now. They are very, very small. Um, they're only probably about maybe. 50 cent piece, a little bit larger than that in size. Um, but I'm excited to see them grow. Those guys can push eight to 10 inches um, easily, maybe a little bit bigger than that, depending on the genetic line. Uh, the other ones I got was your least killifish, which is your um, Hetero Andaria Formosa, which is considered your world's 
uh, smallest live bearing species. So nothing new in the hobby. They've been around for quite some time. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm excited to, to breed those guys. Uh, the, the Waru that I obtained are all males. Um, or actually, I'm sorry. These guys are all males, the Severums and the Waru on sexed. Um, and then I got some Lawigia, some Rotala, some Water Sprite, and a couple of other plants as well. Uh, so basically, as far as livestock of fish goes, that's what I obtained. Uh, I want to really get back to what I enjoy to do and what I've been doing for many, many years now in this hobby, and that's getting ultimately back to my roots, and that's nano tank setups. Um, basically, anywhere from, you know, a five gallon to a 10 gallon nano setup, a really nice aquascape tank, putting the appropriate plants in there, inverts, fish, doing a nice community tank where everything can coexist with one another and really just provide a wonderful overall ecosystem. Uh, so I, that's what I've been predominantly doing for past year plus now is really just getting back into breeding a lot of different, uh, you know, live bearing species, uh, some Tetras, um, or I'm sorry, not Tetras. Um, I don't know why I said Tetra. I'm thinking of Tetras because I got to send some out on Monday. Um, some Endlers. Uh, of course, I jumped on the whole guppy bandwagon thing. Uh, I got some really cool um, guppies and, uh, you know, some other stuff that I've discussed. And, you know, of course, all that is on the website. So my intentions are to be able to breed and be able to provide this stuff to you guys if you're interested in the future. So anything that I obtain, I usually have the intent to eventually breed it as my ultimate focus. And yes, I will breed Severums one day. I just don't have the space to do it. It takes up too much real estate. Uh, so let's head over here to the chat and see what we got going on. Now, let's see. I'm getting up to the chat. Up to the chat. All right. So my pond snails have decided. Uh, I might have already read this. I'm going to read it again. Sorry, it's been a long day. Uh, my pond snails have decided to repopulate in an alarming rate. Thinking of using the inverted. Okay, I did get to that one. Uh, let's keep going on. Uh, Gary's Aquatic said, will cichlids eat my java moss if I add some to their tank? Give it a try. That's all I can tell you. I, I can't tell you for certain if it would or won't. I have my theories on it uh, that it could end up as a snack, but you don't know until you try it. So I'll add a little bit in there and give it a try. Um, I mean, moss is not, you know, it, if you do it right, you can grow it out quite quickly depending on what moss you have of course um but you can try it i've done it before i've had some that eat it and i've had others that will just go up and kind of graze on it um and they'll leave alone so uh snails die off for me and regularly after food source dies out uh, we took a field trip to four local food stores and they gave away a hundred dollars at each location that is awesome it's absolutely awesome. Uh, Dave, Dave wants a frontosa now. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Unless you have my fish, Dr. Red Hill said. Yeah. I don't know what's going on in your fish there. Uh, let's see. I want a species frontosa tank. Yep. And this will be eventually, um, you know, uh, strictly a frontosa tank. These guys are just in there for girl out right now. Let's see. Unless they get along really, really well, you can see that Cherokee I can see in the uh, the screen here. But um, the thing is that people don't realize that Severums, the reason I feel comfortable with putting the Severums in there, even at the size that they are, I'm legitimately, and I'm not just saying this because I'm biased towards Severums, I'm legitimately more afraid of the Severums going after that Frontosa. I've seen Severums tear things apart. Um, I've had Severums that get absolutely massive in size 
and those guys can pack a punch. Um, they do not mess around. They kind of like my personality. It's like a, you know, one of those things, just leave them alone as long as you're cool, but they will defend themselves, especially as a pack. I mean, there's a pack of three, there's three against one. Yes. That frontosa can definitely do some damage. I'm not taking that away, but, um, I, I've seen them destroy some pretty massive things. Um, but, uh, yeah. They definitely have really intriguing personalities. Um, but as you can see, these guys are all coexisting well together. But again, I'm raising them up. You know, I get these guys, you know, even smaller than the ones I picked up today from the auction, uh, which isn't showing up very well here on video. But you're talking about yay big in size. And, you know, I generally, then I grow them up together as a full, you know, as a family, more or less. And... If I add any, if I added those three severums into this tank, which I'm not going to, just because this is already populated enough, um, eventually those three severums will go with these guys in the future, just not in this tank. Um, it, it's just, it's already overpopulated as it is. But that thing is changing close to 100% water on a daily basis. Uh, you like those rummies, Dave? Let's see here. Give me a moment here. Just trying to, my chat started going crazy on me. I'm trying to get caught back up here. If I miss anything, feel free to go ahead and, um, throw it in the bottom. I'm getting close to the bottom, so... Uh, my fish don't even go together with what everyone says should work. Uh, you got to make it work. Um, I do things in an unorthodox manner that I will never put on video and I will make it work. Um, but yeah, you got to put your fish on time on. I'm not even joking. Um, I'm a firm believer on that, that you, that fish are smart enough that you can teach them. I've done it before. Um, so I know it's, I know it's feasible. It's plausible as Mythbusters would say plausible, but again, you put too much out there on the internet, on the interwebs, and then you're just going to get nothing but a backlash. And chances are those folks that are giving you the backlash has probably never even kept fish in their life. Um, or for not very long. So to me, education comes from experience and experience validates your education. You know, so I never will claim that I'm an expert and nor will I ever be an expert. I have, I don't think anybody in this hobby should ever claim that they're an expert. And I think even most veteran aquarists wouldn't consider that they're experts. They're just simply aquarists who have been in the hobby and educated themselves for many, many years. So, um, I don't know when somebody calls himself an expert, I just kind of get the, uh, not the right impression, you know? Because everybody has their own little niche. Uh, Rick's Aquatic said, just sub. Can't wait to see the nano tanks. Well, thank you so much, Rick. I really do appreciate it. Uh, we got Big E's in the house. Thank you so much, Mark. Uh, let's see here. Jimmy, have you seen my cichlid setup? I want to say, David, I'm not sure the last video I've caught of yours. Uh, but, yeah, I'll definitely have to check it out. If there's anything new, let us know. Uh, it's been a few weeks, though, since I last seen your last update. Uh, white pond snails are pea size or less to your rice size. Golds are a nickel size or bigger, so I'm not truly worried. Uh, they will get in the bottle opening. Yeah, you just got to play around with it. Give it. Um, uh, I've done videos on that, but it's a pretty basic concept. Um, and Mary Beth, it sounds like you're definitely on the right track, that you already know the concept and everything behind it. Uh, if you're still having some issues, then you can definitely always email me uh, at sergeant.tank at yahoo.com. All that's down in the uh, description, or you can always comment on like this video, for instance, and I'll do my best to try to walk you through it. Um, uh, Gary's Aquatics, uh, got to go. Thank you so much for help. Uh, we'll finish watching later. Thank you so much, Gary's Aquatics. I really do appreciate uh, the support. 
Uh, gets my fault with the bass when fishing for them. They'll attack uh, pay three times their size. Yeah, we're not talking about bass. Um, we're talking about uh, relevance of, you know, that's kind of apples and oranges. Uh, Penny this Aquatic said, have you settled in the fish from the auction yet? Uh, yep. They are got three over here in this tank, and the rest of them are split up between the other fish rooms. Uh, so let's see. James said, Dave and Benton course, I'll be checking that out. All right, you guys, I'm at the bottom of the chat. The other thing I picked up here, this is an Eco Cube C. This is what I was sharing at the beginning of this. I won it from a $5 raffle, which is pretty cool. It's a brand new uh, nano setup here. Uh, I'll probably either do this on a video. I'm not sure when I'm going to get around to doing it. It's not going to be anytime soon. Uh, maybe I'll do it on a live stream. I'll schedule it out or something. We'll do like a live uh, aquascape. I already know what uh, fish, or I'm sorry, I already know what uh, livestock I'll end up putting in here. Of course, natural plants and all of that too and substrate. So I'll have uh, everything to go and then we can maybe do it together uh, to get you guys kind of engaged and see how I go about aquascaping. So um, yeah, we can try to plan that sometime in the future. So I thought that was pretty cool. That's over a hundred dollars set uh, on Amazon. So definitely uh, got lucky there. Uh, Mary Beth, you are more than welcome. So any questions at all for me? I didn't plan on, uh, we're going on almost a half hour. So I'm going to be cutting this off here very soon unless you guys have some questions for me. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, Dank Tank said, Jeremy, do you have any knowledge of the rams not being able to fertilize eggs in the pH of 7.8? Just want to know if I'm wasting my time if I try to rear. Uh, you aren't going to have the greatest outcome. I'm being brutally honest with you, Dank. Um, what I'm finding by trying, uh, because I didn't want to have to go through that route, but unfortunately, um, if you want... I've done it both ways, but if you want a good, successful yield, I would recommend lots of tannins. So there's a few options you can do. Uh, you can use rainwater, which is quite acidic. You can use reverse osmosis water. So even if it has a total dissolved solids of anywhere between 5 and even 15, 20 parts per million, you should be completely fine. And then also use methylene blue. Um, and then you can also add, uh, you can boil up uh, almond leaves, maple leaves, uh, you know, that type of thing. You can definitely boil it, let it cool, and then you can add that liquid from the boiled leaves as uh, liquid tannins to that as well. So there's a few different options that you can do there. And then I would also be doing 50% uh, water changes daily. Um, I wish that I was doing video when I was breeding those guys, but it's been over 10 years ago and my memory just isn't the greatest because um, it frustrates me too because I had such a great success and it did not happen overnight. I was feeding the fry off from microworms. Now nothing in my fish room seems to like microworms. So now I had to switch back over. I'm doing vinegar eels. Um, so yeah, I mean, I used to... I mean, mycogeophagus, if, if you've ever seen the embryo size, are very, very small. When they hatch out, they're by far one of the smallest out of anything in my fish room that I breed when they come out. They are super, super small. And uh, I think a lot of it just has to do with genetic lines. I think I was honestly lucky and blessed 10 years ago when I was breeding those guys in the hundreds um, to have a very good genetic line starting out because, honestly, the embryos, if I remember right, were... Um, not quite double the size, but they were just larger. So obviously embryo, I'm talking about the, the actual egg itself. Uh, so that's, that's what I would do. Hopefully that helps you out, uh, at that hardness level. I do not feel that you're going to have a successful outcome, but, um, that's why I haven't put any video out, uh, to be honest with you. So. 
trust me, it's frustrating. There's points where I just want to like sell off the Michael Geophagus just because it's it's one of those things. My patience 10 years ago was a lot different than what it is now. Um, so it's easy to give up and just say the heck with it. But um, I can get things to spawn all day long. I can go get those guys to trigger spawn probably even tonight if I wanted to. That's not, it's the rearing and the raising. Um, I can get those guys hatching out, but like I said, they, the, the, uh, the micro worms, I do not want to go the brine shrimp. Um, I can get Daphnia. Uh, that would be my next, that would honestly the next route just because I have easy access to it. Um, I just don't want to add anything else to my list. Uh, the reason I like micro worms is it's efficient. Um, they're easy to do. It's cost effective. I can keep many cultures going. It's something I can also offer on our website. Uh, so there's lots of reasons why. Same thing with vinegar eels. Eventually, I'll start offering those on the website. Um, they will eat those. Uh, so I got a really good culture of that going now. Uh, so it's just kind of making up for some lost time. So uh, the reason I was using micro worms with the micro geos is due to the fact that that's what I use, like I said, close to a decade ago when I was breeding them. Um, that's how I raised them up, and uh, I had limited loss. They loved it, um, but I was doing 25, 50 percent water changes daily. I was using basically a half tap, half RO water, if I recall, sponge filter, um, bare bottom tank, keeping that tank clean. Uh, so I would go through siphon that out. I mean, literally, the majority of my time in the fish rooms was actually spent just keeping that tank clean. That's the biggest thing. Keep Keep the bare bottom, keep it a bare bottom tank uh, when you're growing it out. Uh, any uneaten food, because they will tend to stay towards the top, I find, rather than putting themselves towards the bottom. Uh, and I find that true with a lot of different embryos when they start hashing out. A lot of times they're going to be towards the surface because of oxygen and so forth. Because if there's any dead spots in the tank, that could be depleting their their oxygen levels. So the the you have to realize these guys are microscopic. So if you go down, you know, twenty feet into a pond and your ears start popping, you know that's kind of the way I would look at it with these small little fish that are trying to go all the way down to the bottom of the tank. So keep them in a small tank, like a maybe nothing bigger than like a five and a half. I would recommend just because of the depth. Uh, you can use that fry rack system because that's what I use. Um, but if you find that the water parameters are causing too much of a swing, then I would try to bump it up because that's what I was growing them out in. If I recall, it was a five and a half gallon bare bottom sponge filter, um, no methylene blue. Uh, I might have used some Epsom salt if I remember. I think I actually I used Epsom salt back then. I don't remember the, the dosage. See, I, I'm horrible with this. Uh, this is where you guys need to learn from my mistakes is keep track of your stuff. So now what I do is I track my memory. Like I said, you know, a lot of stuff physically and everything has changed for me. So my memory is pretty much shot. Um, you know, I, I mess up my kids' names all the time and um, everything else, you know. But uh, yeah, with that being said, write it down. Keep a tracking of how you breed, what you've had success with, the dates, um, the names, redundancy is key then you can look back then you know because i i forget a ton um i just do i, I forget a, a bunch so i didn't write anything down at all um used to have wonderful memory but it's pretty much out the window uh we got carlos the fish nerd in the house what's going on carlos um let's see i was trying not to go the clown loach way i only have a 10 gallon see we got g michael how are you we got uh electric records thanks for the live uh saturday night fish talk well thank you for stopping in we got mark franklin hello all right uh dr red Pill said, sorry, was saying it was my fault for thinking of Baskin share tank. Ah, uh, gotcha. Uh, do you have any Frontosa for sale? I don't. Um, but 
I have contacts, David. I can always, the best thing you guys can do is I will do my best. That's my biggest thing is, is, you know, is being a hobbyist first and foremost. If we ever go away from that, you might as well just close up shop and throw away the key. Um, as soon as I ever lose the drive, I'm done. Um, that's just me, especially in the hobby, because I can easily go from one hobby to the next. But of course, this has been something I've been doing for a very long time, so that's not going to happen. But my point is, don't ever lose the drive. Enjoy it. Have fun with it. Um, play around. Experiment. That's what's fun about this hobby. Try different things. What works for one person isn't going to work for somebody else necessarily. Um, just do your due diligence. Do your research. I mean, any... Any veteran in the hobby is going to tell you that. Anybody that's been in this hobby long enough is going to tell you. Utilize Google. That's what it's there for. Um, you know, you don't have to believe everything you say, but if you check out 10 different forums and 90% of the forums are all uh, coinciding with one another, you can kind of use it as viable resource and information to chances are your productivity rate is going to be a lot greater uh, versus that 10% that is kind of outside that box so that's where process of elimination comes in that's where research and time is spent so just don't go with the first thing you see um and then you have to go with your gut uh, to me i'm a person that goes with my intuition i mean my instinct is usually right not always but most of the time so if you start second guessing yourself there's probably a reason why you're second guessing yourself in the first place um but uh, yeah, so that's my best advice for anybody coming into this hobby and just life in general. Um, let's see here. But uh, you can always email me. Um, you know, like I said, I keep a, a tracking here. So what I do is when I go to my local clubs, if I go to other areas, what I try to do is I try to keep a, a mental note or I bring this with me. And... If I come across something, then they'll give me an idea of the availability and where it's located. And if it comes across cheap enough, and if I have the space to do it, I'll usually obtain it. And then I'll try to work something out with that person that might be interested. So, for instance, with Frontosa, I can tell you I don't have the space for it. And if I got a good deal on Frontosa, I'm keeping it myself. Um, but, uh, yeah, so... Um, you can see these guys are, are playing over here. Um, it's a little bit outside of camera view, but you can see we got Cherokee, the Frontos is chasing the, my seven around, but I'm not concerned. That just goes to show you I'm not afraid of that Frontos to doing any damage to these sevens whatsoever. Um, I will put my money on a seven any day of the week. Um, but, uh, you know, yeah, so these guys are doing good. Had a little bit of cloudy eye, but that's to be expected. A lot of ammonia issues and so forth when they're in the bags. Um, my little pet peeve, and I'm not going to call anybody out. When you're bringing fish to an auction or you're selling fish, please singular bag them. Put them in their own bag. Don't put them together. They're going to beat each other up. And ammonia levels are going to spike. Detox your fish. I don't want to see one little spot of feces in that bag. So when I'm selling fish to, bring, to provide to you guys or from bringing them to the auction, I'm putting them through a minimum two to three day detoxing phase. Detox them. That's why I can keep my fish for a decade and they live for well over five years. Any one of these fish in this tank, um, majority of them are well over five years old, um, pushing 10 years. And the reason that is I skip feed, I feed the right foods. Um, I, I learned from experience. I did a heck of a lot of research years back to know what I was getting into. Um, I just, I absolutely love Severums. And, you know, I can't wait when I have the means real estate wise as far as the the capacity to do it um that's why i kind of got out of african cichlids and so forth never was a big african cichlid person to begin with but you know 
they just take up a lot of real estate. And that's why I really like nano, nano setups. So um, it, anyways, my point is the cloud AI, I'm looking at them right now. I'm not noticing any of it. Usually that will clear up almost within an hour or two. So just give it some time and don't be alarmed. You can use uh, some Malefix, uh depending on the hardness level of your municipal water source if you're on a well system. I do find that Malefix will help clear that up quite quickly, usually within 24 hours. Um, but most of the time, that's just a key indicator of stress. Um, so don't be alarmed if you notice a little bit of cloudy eye, I can guarantee you uh, it's going to happen at some point or another with one of your fish. I do find that uh, Severums, um, your parrot fish, a lot of those different cichlids like that um, are more prone to um, cloud, cloud eye. Uh, my short-term memory is actual almost non-functioning because of my condition. I I try not to make a joke out of it, but as most of you guys are know, I obviously I'm incapacitated from doing work and being disabled and so forth due to the fact that I have a disability. But I did hit my hard my head uh, quite hard, so I always make a joke, even though there is absolutely nothing funny about it. Um, that I think I hit my head too hard that day. Or it could just be age. I have no idea. Let's see. I'm scrolling down, you guys. Uh, sorry, I get on my own little tangent, and then I start losing focus of chat, so bear with me. I used to be better at this whole live stream thing, but probably when I was doing 15 a day. Uh, let's see. Uh, I have your contact, Jeremy. Please keep me in mind for Frontosa. All right, right, will do. Uh, your fish are so civilized. They better be. I put those, I'm telling you. Uh, we got Jenny Lee in the house. How are you doing, Jenny Lee? Thank you so much for stopping in. Uh, let's see. We got Jason Fish Traffic. What's going on, buddy? Uh, let's see. What else have we got going on here? Um, some of them are tough cookies. <laughs> Mine with African sick mix African cichlids. Yeah. Nope. Some of them don't play around at all. I've yet to ever find in my fish keeping days as long as, I mean, be fair. I mean, if you putting a tiny juvenile several or something in a tank, I mean, come on, you guys know what I mean. Sub adult size. Let's, let's put it that way. They can hold their own. We got Deep Bachelor's Planet Aquarium. Let's see. Mary Best said, Sergeant Tank, being new, what is the disability? You seem rather coherent to me. Um, where do I start? Um, all right, so Mary Beth, the thing is back in 2011, I was involved in a horrific automobile collision caused by the negligence of another individual. It was 8.25 in the e evening of July 23rd, 2011. I'll never forget it. It was by far one of my worst fears coming to reality within about 25 seconds of time. It's a very bad intersection out in the outskirts, not too far from where I grew up. And uh, anyways, we're heading home and individuals doing about 70 miles an hour. We were doing 55 and we T-boned them. Needless to say, the rest is history. I've gone through multiple back surgeries. Um, I have uh, many failed back surgeries. I have uh, a diagnosis. I have a neuromodulation unit, spinal cord stimulator. It's about a $120,000 unit, which does me absolutely zero good. Um, and that is implanted right in my uh, epidural space. And then there's a battery pack down just above um, my waist area on the left-hand side, but actually just caused me more issues. Um, and I've been, of course, clinically diagnosed with every form of uh, major depressive disorder, major anxiety, insomnia that you can imagine. Um, been on probably 300 different medications uh, between opiate medications. Um, yeah, nothing touches it. Uh, so that is a very, very long story crammed up into about 25 seconds. So um, my diagnosis, complex regional, complex regional pain syndrome type 2, which I've been clinically diagnosed with, is 
categorized as one of the worst forms of uh, on a pain scale that you can possibly have. It's worse than fibromyalgia. It's 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 a cancer is what it is. Um, no disrespect to anybody going through, but you guys don't know what I'm going through either. So if I had to compare um, just from a physical and a mental point of view, it is just like a cancer. Um, it, it breaks your body down. Uh, it's a very, a, it only gets worse. It's a neuropathic condition, which um, sends uh, nerve receptors all throughout your body. So let's say you did damage up here in your shoulder area that could then cause a year or two down the road. Now you start having pain down to your left foot. Um, the, the way I can put it to you is I laugh when somebody says, I have back aches. This is way different than a back ache. This is all nerve. So it, it besides your common muscle cramping and everything else, which of course is at a 10 out of 10, um, it, it's, it's basically taking your hand and submerging it into a bucket of ice and holding it there 24-7. The burning pain is beyond imaginable. And probably at the end of the day, people ask how I do it. My Christian psychiatrist asked me how I do it. My wife asked me how I do it. That's my wife and my kids, what keep me going. So. Um, I used to be a very um, devoted Christian. I'm very open with that, and nobody will ever take that away. However, trust me, uh, that has it's tested my faith a great, great deal. I will say that at the end of the day. So, um, but yeah, you guys you just got to That's why I end every video as far as stay encouraged, keep on keeping on, happy fishing. Uh, the reason I do that is it is a reminder for myself to keep going. Um, I feel for people and I'm not even talking to you guys right now about all of the negligence and active due diligence and good faith through the at faults, through the insurance company, through Social Security. It is a never ending battle here with Jeremy. That's all I can say. It's been well over six years and I've no farther ahead. And I'm just telling you guys physical, you guys haven't even heard everything else so um yeah uh people tell me i'm strong but the one that keeps me strong is the um the lord above so uh, yep you know but anyway that uh i can i can talk about that all day long uh we got airhawk 360 in the house at hugs thank you so much um insurance companies yeah don't even get me going on that uh, all right, Fish Shop said, Jeremy, I know where you're coming from. We got Kevin in the house. How you doing, Kevin? We got Ken Lee. So sorry, late to the party. Uh, Mary Beth said, how awful. I'm glad you are strong and plowing through the obstacles. Glad to see you here and be the odds each day. You guys keep me going. This community keeps me going. This hobby, it's its definitely nothing but a, a therapeutic thing for me at this point. I have to use it as therapy. Um, let's see here. And I'm not going to get into, I know a lot of individuals have tried. The thing is, you guys don't understand. Um when as far as like I, i'm just not gonna do it i'm not you know necessarily gonna get into all the details as far as cannabis and medical medicinal marijuana and all of that um to each is their own i can just tell you uh from a mental state it wouldn't do me any good um just because of my odds wouldn't be greater, you know, it wouldn't be a benefit for me. And it's just out of pure principle. I just wouldn't do it. Never touch that stuff in my life. Um, having kids and so forth. Uh, um, as most men, we have addictive personalities, um, is what it comes down to. I'm, I have an, a very addictive personality and I know I could easily abuse that just like with alcohol. 
if you guys remember back, I mean, I used to drink right here and I feel ashamed of doing that. That's why I don't do that anymore. You know, I'm not going to do that, especially when I'm trying to be a role model and, and be a good example for, especially youth coming up in this hobby. If you're trying to be a public figure, why are we doing that? You know, and, you know, kids are smart enough these days to read between the lines. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just not, not an avenue I want to go down. So, uh, the next, the next, uh, spot for me would be, uh, doing ketamine. That's going to be the next, if I do anything else, that would be ketamine, but it's, it's not going to happen. Um, yeah, I know Rev. Um, it's just not, not a route that I want to go at this point. Not to say you never know. I mean, it's something that I'll definitely have to, uh, really think about hard. Uh, so I hope you guys can respect that. No different. You know, you have to respect my decision just as I respect your guys' decision and what you guys want to do. Uh, Mad Fish Diva said, bless you, Jeremy. Well, thank you so much. I'm not looking. Yeah, I definitely don't need any empathy or sympathy um, or anything, but I really do appreciate it. So, uh, James Bland said, amen, bro. Thanks for sharing your knowledge and being a good example. Thanks so much, James. I really do appreciate it. Those are definitely words of encouragement. Uh, KG Cichlid said, I want to see more goofy thumbnails. Oh, Lord. Um, if you guys haven't been paying attention, I've been getting into the whole Photoshop and thumbnail thing. If you guys haven't had an opportunity to check those out. Um, because the first thing, obviously, that viewers are going to see is going to be your face, of course, your eyes, because they connect. So, it's just, I'm having fun with it. I'm being goofy with it. So, that's what he's referring to. I don't think there's an issue with beer as long as you don't rely on it. Um, it was getting to the point for me, though, that I had to cut it off. Um, you know, um, I will have one every once in a while, but like I said, I can, I have a very addictive personality. That's all I'm going to say. So I know my limits, and that is one of the reasons why that of which I was just talking about, I'm not going to mention. It again, but you guys know that is why at this point in my life, emotionally, physically, and so forth, I'm not willing to try. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, God will only throw at you what you can handle. Uh, let's see here. What try? Uh, David said, Jeremy, what type of affordable camera can I utilize for better picture quality for my channel? Oh, David. Um, I don't know what kind of phone you got, man. I, I know a lot of people are using, I'm going to try to obtain a, a new phone. My, my phone here is, is awful. This is my third S5, which I like real well. It's, I got this one used off from Craigslist. It wasn't a hot phone. I did, you know, you guys know my background. I'm not worried about that, but there was definitely some issues with it. The thing overheats. I've tried three different batteries. Um, I'm just sick and tired of it. It's, it's so slow. I uh, can't take good picture with it, video with it. So I'm going to try to go with the Samsung Galaxy. Is it the S6 Edge? But that is kind of what I'm tentatively looking at. But what I currently use is the um, this one right here that I got an open box by. This is a Sony. Um, it shoots in 60 frames per second, um, 1080. It is the handy cam. It's about a $600 camera with a lot of add-ons. You can put like a shotgun mic on top of it. Um, and, uh, uses, uh, it has an internal memory. I want to say this one has 32 gigs of internal, but I don't even use the internal. I use a, uh, SD card. And I got 128 gigabyte. And I'm trying to see the model on this thing. The model on this one is a Sony HDR dash CX uh, 675. And I just ordered some new batteries for the aquatic experience because I wanted some backups. I also have a GoPro. Uh, I used to use the, um, the Canon. 
I can't remember what model. I've been through so many different cameras, but I just never had anything that worked for me very well uh, besides this one. It has the uh, stabilization feature built into it, which I like really, really well. Uh, we got Jimmy in the house. Somebody say Photoshop. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Sorry, bud. I can't keep up with you. Um, can't keep up with Jimmy. But he's, he's given me some tips and tricks when they're in town. So definitely much love to you, Jimmy, that make it a little bit more efficient. So there's a couple little cool tools that he showed me on Photoshop that um, have helped me a great deal. I'm able to cut my editing time in about a quarter, if not a half. So I'm, I'm still learning a ton. But once you learn it, I just woke up one morning because I was getting so frustrated with it because I have a monthly subscription base. It's like 11 bucks a month after fees and taxes or whatever, $10 and something. Can't remember exactly what. Um, I had like six cups of coffee and then I was just like, I'm going to do it. You know, I had to give myself a little pep talk that particular morning. And like, this is maybe a month, a little bit longer than that. And I just was able to figure it out. I wasn't watching any tutorials or anything. I just started playing around with it started kind of putting the pieces together like a puzzle and ever since now I'm hooked. So it can be frustrating and everything else. I'm not technically savvy when it comes to that. I can fix things. I can do solder connections. I can do, you know, a lot of different stuff. But when it comes to that, I just, a lot of it comes to patience. I, I just lose patience too quickly. I get frustrated. So but now, now I'm a Photoshop aholic, Photoshop aholic. I don't know what you would call. Uh, we got Koi Dragons. Uh, should be doing homework, but I have tomorrow to do it. <laughs> yeah, you better get your homework done. Uh, let's see. Just buy a Jimmy clone. I couldn't afford a Jimmy. Uh, I have children, Dr. Red Pill. My children need to be able to step up to the plate. They're, they're young enough, and they, sh they should be, if anybody, especially the oldest, he should be the one uh, be able to bang this stuff out, but I got to sit down and walk him through it. So, um, Sorry, you guys. Chat's kind of scrolling here. Um, if I miss anything, just go ahead. Boom. You're not spamming it. Go ahead and throw it in the chat. Right at the bottom, towards the bottom. So let me know what it is. Uh, Jordan is going to be uh, his editor soon enough. Uh, I agree. Definitely. Uh, uh, who's Sashimi Jimmy is talking about is um, one of my boys, which is uh, eight. Uh, he was doing something with his DS. It was like. I don't remember. Was it like slow mo, slow motion, or I don't even remember. But we're like, "What are you doing?" He was like capturing all these like frames, and then like putting them together on his DS. He was setting up. Um, he was setting up uh, something I think with Legos, and he was doing something pretty cool with it. Uh, claymation animation. That's what it was. That's right. So he was doing claymation animation. Yeah, because he's been watching these YouTube. Uh, he's a big fan of um, EvanTube. Of course, any of you guys that have kids, you know, probably watch EvanTube. But um, uh, let's see. Uh, I heard Jimmy Clones had a special on at the moment. I don't think that any one of us are going to be able to top Jimmy. I've seen his skill set behind the scenes and he's holding back a ton i will say that so i know he's not looking for a shout out or trying to toot his horn but um he makes it look easy uh it, i definitely is gifted just like a just like a football player basketball player baseball sports whatever you're gifted at um what i'm gifted at is i can fix and i can build just about anything what I'm not gifted at and I got to work hard at is this kind of stuff. Editing, uh, video, 
the audio aspect of it. You know, that's what I have to learn. What come more natural to me because I grew up around with it is, you know, is anything to do with the construction area that you can imagine I've done it. Um, you know, when it comes to fabrications that I can do, but everybody has their own gifts and that is just one gift. Unfortunately, I wasn't blessed with. <laughs> I got to work a little extra harder. Uh, let's see. B. St. John said shimmy equals artist. Yes, it's definitely an art form to say the least. I feel that keeping fish is an art form. Right, Cherokee. Since I put those severums in there, if you guys don't know, Cherokee's a frontosa. Um, what I actually like is now actually having some more livestock in this tank. He's actually showing his colors like he should be. He's strutting his stuff. He's flaring up. Let's feed him. You guys want to feed? Yeah, let me head on over here. Let's move the camera. Let's feed this guy. See if these severums are eat. I know that he should come and get food. All right. Look at these guys over here. That's hilarious. They are mad. They're so mad right now. They're trying to like, if they could, they would jump this tank and come into this tank. That's how spoiled they are. All right. He doesn't want to be on camera, so we're going to pretend like we're not watching him, even though we, we know that we are. He's like looking at me. He's hiding out down behind his... Down behind that overflow pipe down here. <clears throat> you guys are all yelling at me, feed them. It's supposed to be skip day today. You guys are supposed to be skip day. Look at them. Look at the ghosty. Right up here. You can see ghost knife right there. Ah. Uh. You guys want some? You want some? Good. <laughs> I know I'm horrible. I'm a horrible daddy. All right. Oh yeah. Sorry, man. Um, if I miss that, Jimmy. Um, oh, okay. I see it here. I wasn't even paying attention. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, said, oh, snap. I just noticed a lab mic. Yeah, I like it. I really, really do. So thank you. Um, if you guys are wondering what he's talking about, it is, I don't have the, yeah, it's in my workshop. I don't have the box for it. Um, but it's, it's on Amazon. Uh, it works really well. Uh, it's got like a 20-foot cord, I think. You can see my cobbled-up mess here. And what's really cool about this one, it's a condenser mic. It's a Boya. So it has the condensing feature. So you put like a, uh, a small watch battery in there. And this part just unscrews. And then it gives you the option, option to switch back and forth from smartphone um, to... Uh, to camera so I really really like it and I really like the fact that it is like a condenser style phone um, so I do understand mics so when people mention XLR and balancing and all of that that I understand because of my music background so I got a mixer here this is a so I do have the bells and whistles but it just doesn't necessarily go hand in hand with what we're doing here on YouTube so this is a Alto ZMX 122FX. This is more of a uh, instrument mixer. You can use it with what I'm doing, and I have used this mixer before, but um, I got a full PA system and everything. Um, but, yeah, so actually uh, Majestic Animals. So if you guys are wondering, that's actually Tim. Uh, so Timothy Michael is his other channel. He does uh, record producer buddy of mine out in Washington area here on YouTube um, does a lot of live streaming at night so if you guys are into the music thing definitely check it out 
uh, give him two thumbs up. So he does songs on the fly at your request. And I really, because of my music, I really enjoy it. So he does pretty much request and he will play right to the music stuff that he's never even played before. So, uh, he's gifted. I will say that. Um, but yeah, um, Tim, let us know, uh, if you're going live tonight to do your, uh, drumming thing i'm still waiting for you to bust out that acoustic man um i want to see what your uh what your git fiddle skills are since i'm uh i'm a git fiddle player uh, i just bought new headphones uh the hd 650 so everything so good to me how much are those jimmy without me looking at that right now it sounds expensive but I know that you, I know that you find the the deals, those Amazon deals, because this can this mic right here, this lab mic is like sixteen bucks with Prime shipping. Um, let's see, yeah, I forgot about that. Tim said, yeah, I bet you did. Ah. <sighs> Have you seen those $30,000 ones? I don't even know how to even pronounce what you're even saying. Is that the Sennheiser? Sounds like some Latin name for uh, a lab mic. Sounds like a fish name or something. S-E-N-N-E-H-E-I-S-E-R. Sennheiser. Uh, I'll go live on my music channel here after you. Then live on this fish channel. All right, you guys. So it's 1020. Um, so this is a great time. There's 36 of us. Uh, if you guys have any last minute questions for me, I only want to do a half hour and now I'm over an hour. Um, so any fish related questions for me? If not, then we'll wrap this up. Uh, Tim, you have uh, the mod wrench man. Go ahead and add your, your linky poo down here in the chat if you haven't created your live stream do me a favor we'll stay that'll give us about five more minutes tim to hang out so if you can do me a favor tim create your uh whatever you call it um Uh, is there an equalization plugins on that mic? It's just your eighth inch jack your male jack on the other one um, Yeah, other than that, it's just this is it. I, that's what I like about it. It's simple um, It's got this part which is like where the condenser part is and then you can alternate between the two between a smartphone or a camera function um, The only downfall the only thing I will say um, I'm never going to claim I'm some sound tech guy, but my ear is different because I have a music ear that I can hear all day long. It's different when you're hearing like a, um, I try to incorporate that somewhat into like podcast or doing the live streams. The only downfall that I don't like is this omnidirectional. The reason I like unidirectional is being able to pick up right here. What I find is it's actually picking up even in some of the videos I did, um, if I have any sound in the background, I can hear it. Yes, I can edit out some of it, but to me, that's just extra time to have to edit, and time is of value to me, and I value my time, and I don't like to spend, as you guys know, I do not like editing. It is the least part, favorite part of doing this YouTube thing is editing. I cannot stand it. The thumbnail thing, I'm all about the Photoshop thing, but doing video editing, it's just, uh, just the thought of having to set up a camera to record and yeah, I'm more of a podcast kind of guy. I, that would be me all day long. I would love to just do podcasts, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, so I'll still do the video thing. Just relax. Um, you know, obviously that's the whole basis of YouTube, but we'll make it work. I'm just excited one day once my uh, kids actually get a little bit older 
to where they have the attention span to keep focus for more than like 15 seconds. Um, so I can actually show them because it would be a lot easier for me if they can walk around and record and if I do a quick 15 or 20 minute update rather than me having to set up multiple different angles, setting up the tripod, worrying about it falling in one of my stock tanks, which I've had happen before. Uh, yeah, it's just, I don't know. I just, I'm not at that point mentally yet. I just don't have the patience for it. Uh, awesome job with your new thumbnails, Jeremy. Well, thank you so much, Brady. I really do appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Just waiting for that link. Uh, let's see here. All right, Tim. So if you guys were wondering, uh, Majestic Animals and Timothy Michael are the same person. So. Uh, Gene, he's going to be adding it. <clears throat> there we go. All right, you guys, there's 35 people here, and I promise you it will not be worth, um, it will be worth your time to head on over. So um, he does an amazing job. If you guys are into music, I highly recommend it. Um, go check it out. He's a phenomenal drummer, and he will take your songs on request, whether if he's ever played them or not. So I'll give it five minutes of your time. That's all I'm asking for. And you guys will be hooked. So I'm trying to get him more traffic. The thing is with doing music, it's a tough area because of all the monetization and issues with YouTube as far as copyrights and all of that. But he should have way more subs than what he has. I can tell you that. Um, but yeah, so head over there. I uh, really do appreciate it. Again, thank you guys so much. And uh, with that being said, we will talk to you guys right back here on the next one as always. You know what's coming next. Stay encouraged. Keep on keeping on. Happy fishing. Have a great night.